Hello, future RCICs. Kyle Broda here with exampreparation.ca. So in this little video, we're going to discuss our competency-based exam simulations. Now, if you're wondering what the difference is between competency-based and knowledge-based, there's a lot. Um, we did a lot of this work in my master's degree. And for you, I've summarized it into six quick words, less memorization, more real life scenarios. So when you think of the changes that the CICC implemented in terms of the GDP, in terms of what they want RCICs to really be able to do, uh, this is a total home run. So it's a home run for everybody uh, beyond the exam really they want you to be ready to jump into work as an rcic so they're testing you on your ability to really go into real life situations and be able to abide by the high standards that you need to have in order to be successful in this profession so if you're working through our program you know that you've got three simulations to do you have another one that we give you if you're taking our seminar. So each of these, of course, now has 125 questions in the competency-based format to reflect, of course, what we are strategizing for in your upcoming EPE. All right, so once you've made your purchase, it's pretty easy to get on and access your exam simulations. So you'll log in over here and then you go under my content. Now, once you go in there, you choose one of your simulations and you get ready to begin. You get really excited like this person. So when we think of the questions that you will face in these exam simulations now, just like theoretically the real exam, uh, we're looking at that competency based format. So what does this mean? Uh, like I told you, the very, very basic foundation of this is simply to move away from questions you can answer by memorizing the ERPA, the regulations, etc., and move into more realistic, real life, practical situations to see how you would respond. And of course, if the way that you would respond to these situations is the way that an RCIC should respond. So that's where you get that experience portion. Now, people often say, hey, but I'm a new graduate. Uh, I don't have any experience as an RCIC. I totally understand. Now, in an exam context, we have to, of course, be able to learn through scenarios in order to gain that experience. But of course, theoretically and academically in, of course, the practical sense that we're being tested on. So I'm going to give you an example of what a question would look like uh, that we would provide you with. All right, so you could pause the video and take a look at this question here. We're going to analyze this one over the course of this lesson here. But um, yeah, just to give you an example, that's one of the one of the new ones that we put in. All right, so feel free to pause the video. All right, so if you paused the video and took a look at that question, awesome. I hope you chose an answer and I hope that, I hope you got the correct answer. <laughs> so just to show you with the simulations, uh, there's a big picture with what we're doing with these, right? I know it's a huge time investment for you. I know it's a, it's a financial investment as well. So I'm gonna show you really, really, really what we're doing with this. Now, every single question you work through is a learning tool. It's something to help you acquire the skills, the knowledge that you need to demonstrate in the exam. Now, that is why we want you to spend your time wisely when you're working through these simulations, because we want you to, of course, know what the correct answer is, what the incorrect answers are, but beyond this, we need to, of course, know why. So we'll explain the answer to you. We'll explain why other answers are not the answers, and of course, the references to this. So it's not just us saying, this is the answer because this, 
it all relates back to the essential competencies that you are being tested on. So when you finish your simulation, so if you have the, if you're joining us for the seminar, you'd have four simulations to work through really, and you started, you finished, you're happy and excited. Well, you get this. So this will come up automatically after your simulation. What this does is essential in helping you really get ready for the exam because we break down your individual performance in each individual area. And that helps you to know which areas you need to work on and which areas you are maybe an expert in already, or maybe ready for already. So somebody asked me this question the other day and I agree. I think it's worth a, a, an answer because you are investing time in, of course, our material. So you want to know how relevant it is to your upcoming exam. So on the one side, uh, we are not the CICC. We don't have the inside scoop where people let us know about the questions and things like that. Uh, on my side, if you've read about my background, um, really an exam person. I love exams, strangely, I guess for some people. <laughs> and I think we're, we have this perfect connection of RCIC um, and education, really. We're really at the intersection of this. So I think that really helps us to really, really, really be able to teach effectively in this program through these simulations and of course to make simulation questions. Now from the CICC, we get a lot of information, right? So over here, uh, the information that jumps out to us is of course, essential competencies, competency-based. And of course, uh, the fact that the CICC really wants to test you on things that happen in real life, practical experience types of questions. So on our side, that gives us a lot to work with and we're pretty excited to implement all of these uh, in, of course, our material. Now, just to go over the term essential competencies, basically it's a huge list of everything that graduate diploma program students should really know at the end of their program. So you can see over here, I've got the link for you as well. You can take a look through it uh, if you want. And you can expand these units here, right? So there's nine units. Uh, you can expand them into really a huge variety of topics. So what we do when we make questions for you to help you pass the exam, of course, is, in my opinion, this part is the art form. And it's what I think we're really, really, really good at. And I love doing this as well. So basically, we take an essential competency that you need to know, and we link it in a lot of different ways. Uh, in this case here, with the example of Ignacio, we linked that to the CICC Code of Professional Conduct, which is, of course, linked to the essential competencies. Now, in essential competencies, you can have that linked with the ERPA, the regulations, tribunals, things like that, right? In this case, it just happens to be the CICC Code of Professional Conduct. Now, the other two elements will be throughout the exam, of course, real life issues that RCICs, future RCICs will likely face in the immigration consulting world. So on our side as well, I think we have a unique perspective on this. Um, we've been in our business for maybe eight years, nine years, and we've seen a lot of these situations, of course. Competency-based question design. Of course, this is a bit more of the technical area uh, that we have to implement when we come up with these questions. So when you really dig in here for this question with Ignacio, it is really about power. So who has more power? Who has to listen to who, basically, in a situation where you have an RCIC versus a, in this case, a CEO of a company? Now, if we know that, well, the RCIC has to abide by, of course, the regulatory requirements above her boss's requirements or that relationship, well, perfect. Now, in the exam, <clears throat> if you're tested on this topic in a different way. So, for example, we took that 
topic of power. The fact that the RCIC obligations to the CICC overrule the CEO of this company, for example. Well, that idea could be, of course, presented in the exam in a different way. Maybe in the exam, it'll be the story of somebody else and that may be a different type of situation. But the thing they're testing you on, if the thing they're testing you on is the exact same idea here, then of course we've done our job in preparing you for that individual topic through the context of a question. So to dig into this uh, just a little bit more, just some concluding points here. So on our side, of course, we spend a lot of time and a lot of creativity and excitement in making these questions for you. Now the competency-based model uh, will of course reflect this and what we do is we put in certain topics more than others to really demonstrate life as an RCIC. Uh, I've got an example for you over here. So for a lot of RCICs, uh, they don't really work with the startup visa. Do you need to know the startup visa theoretically just as an option for your clients anyways? Probably. Is that likely to be reflected in the exam? We are strategizing for that, right? But it might be more useful for you to really become an expert in the Federal Skilled Worker Program, for example, because more RCICs work with that program on a weekly basis. So that would play part of a role of how we break down our topics. Now, um, if we cover a certain topic in a simulation, so for example, this power uh, dynamic that we saw with the Ignacio question. So if that was in simulation one, then we probably won't talk about that topic again in simulation two, three, and the seminar simulation. Maybe it could potentially be presented in a very different way or very vaguely or something like that. Um, but we do want to, of course, present that topic to you and give you a wide variety of lessons that you, you learn basically uh, through all of these simulations rather than repeating these topics. And the art form on our side really is doing all of these things together in a way that helps you reach your goals as effectively as possible. Um, people ask, like I told you before, <laughs> people ask sometimes, do you get the, the questions from the real CICC exam? And we don't, we don't want them. Um, we, there is of course an ethical component with the work that you do as RCICs, just like us. And I think that our system is pretty fantastic anyways. Um, of course, we get feedback from our clients who say something like, I didn't really learn much about a certain topic uh, in my immigration practitioner diploma program. Uh, so thank you for making this amazing lesson on this. Uh, or alternatively, they can say, hey, I wish you had a, a bit more on this other topic. And then of course, we implement that type of information. All right, so if you've made the decision to work through these simulation exams, awesome. Really looking forward to the work that you will do. Uh, remember, of course, you have access to those simulations until your exam. You can take that simulation five times, a hundred times if you want, um, because you have access unlimited all the way until your exam. And you'll see that actually, once you keep working through them, it's going to be such a fantastic tool for you to reach your goals. And you're going to be really happy with the uh, work that you did. So thank you. I appreciate you, appreciate your time. And thank you for letting us help you reach your goals.